Hi, I'm Assam, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education. And today, we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMS at Pink Booklet, Practice Test 3, specifically Unit 21, Questions 57 to 60. And in this unit, we're going to take a look at some physics. You probably would have guessed uh, right away because there's a picture of an astronaut jumping up, and this is represented by J. So that's why you can see, for example, J Earth is a jump on Earth, or J Moon is a jump on the Moon. Uh, the good thing about this unit is uh, we just have to take note of the three equations or formulae presented. And another piece of information is that the gravity on the Earth is six times stronger than the surface of the Moon. Now, before we dive into question 57, I think it's important to note when we take a look at these equations or these formulae, we can see that for a jump to occur on Earth or the Moon, the K value has to be greater than one. Because if the jump uh, is going to happen, we have to have a positive value. It has to be greater than zero. So J Earth has to be greater than zero to witness a jump. So that means K Earth and K Moon have to be greater than one for a jump to occur. Now keep that in mind. So if we take a look at question 57, it says consider jumps on Earth and the Moon. A person will only leave the ground if, which we just discussed, because they've given us the option of K Earth and K Moon. We know straight away just by looking at the equations, these have to be, so let's say, greater than 1. Because if they equal 0, it's no jump. So j greater than 1, jump. Or j less than 1, no jump. Or it'll be an inverse jump. I don't know how it's going to work physically, but the point is, based on 57, uh, the answer, therefore, has to be B. So for a person to leave the ground, on Earth, K, has, K Earth has to be greater than 1. And on the Moon, K Moon has to be greater than 1. So now if you move on to question 58, it states, suppose a person jumps 11 times as high on the Moon as on Earth when using equal force. How large is the force exerted by the person jumping? So let's just write this. So if somebody is jumping 11 times more on the moon than Earth, that's how we can write it. Because think about it, J moon over J Earth equals 11 over 1. So we can rearrange this if we want to J moon equals times this by J Earth, J Earth, 11 J Earth. So I'll just leave it as EA actually, or just Earth. So we can see that we can actually substitute these values into the three equations we've been provided, or the three formulae we've been provided with. So J moon is going to equal, so we can rewrite this as 11 J earth. And you can see that J earth equals C, K earth minus one, and J moon is going to equal C, K earth minus one. So how about we just plug and chug, and put these um, values into the equations and try to solve. So maybe I'll just get my toolbar out, we'll clear the screen and start from the beginning. So it's gonna be 11JE, it's going to equal, remember, C6KE minus one, and we know that 11JE is the same as saying 11 times C, so we can say 11 times, C, K, E minus 1, which equals that. So it's the same as saying, um, so let's, oh, let me just write it here, actually just for brevity, just to show you what it's going to look like. I mean, in the exam, you'd obviously try to save space on the, the little amount of paper they give you in the GAM set, but um, I'm just showing this for you because it's easier to see. So we can cross off the like values, so the C constants, and we're going to be left with times this side, 11 ke minus 11 equals on this side, 6 ke minus 1. So if we just move them around, so 6 to here is, so 11 minus 6 is 5. Over here, 10, so 11 minus 1 is 10. So we can just say, therefore, 10 ke equals... Uh, sorry, 5 ke, 5 ke equals 10, so therefore ke equals 
2. Now, we're not finished just yet because the question uh, 58 asks, how large is the force exerted by the person jumping? And it's telling you in terms of the person's weight. So we know that if Ke on Earth, so Ke for Earth is going to be 2, so we can increase this by, say, 2. The force is going to be increased, therefore, by 2. Because if the right-hand side goes up by a factor of 2, the left-hand side has to go up by a factor of 2. And the question is saying, how much of the person's weight? Well, if this is going up by a factor of 2, then the person's weight, so the force, sorry, is going up by a factor of 2. I mean, the weight hasn't, uh, uh, in this instance, if we take a look here, what's changing is the K value. So therefore, if the K value is changing, we're not changing the weight per se, we're changing the K value, which means if the force is going to be twice up here, it's going to be two times more than the weight because only the K value is changing here. So that's, that's what's important to know, why the answer has to be C, twice the person's weight on Earth. Because if Ke is double, force has to be double, which means it's going to be twice as much as the weight on Earth. So that you just have to conceptualize it that way. So if we take a look at question 59 now, now 59 is another one where you can use maths or you can just use um, some logical thinking. It says, consider a person who jumps on the moon using a force that is six times their weight on the moon. If a person uses equal force on Earth, what would happen? Well, if you just think about it logically, if the Earth's gravity is six times stronger than the moon, so the moon, so the gravity on the moon is one sixth, and they exert the same force on Earth. Then you know straight away that if they're going to do six times the force that they use on the moon, but it's a one sixth gravity, you just times that by six, it equals one. If you do the exact same thing on Earth, nothing's going to happen. There's no net change in force, so it's going to equal well no change. So J is going to equal zero because the K is going to equal uh, well one. So nothing's going to happen. So you know straight away that the answer for 58 has to be A, not leave the ground, just by doing, using some deductive reasoning. However, let's use some mathematics here. So let's just say the moon. You can use three, three body diagrams here. I'll use, let's say, a triangle to represent the person or whatever. You can use whatever you want. But we'll have arrows. Remember, three body, di three body diagrams. So we've got the force going down is going to be mg. So g is going to be for the moon. Just put a moon. Up here, we're told that the force equals, so they're using six times their weight. So it's going to be six times. So it's going to be, therefore, six times mg. So that's how you can represent it on the moon. So it says, consider a person who jumps on the moon using a force that is six times their weight on the moon if the person uses equal force on Earth. Now let's write it down for Earth. So free body diagram, let's just say the person here, going down, going up. Now remember, they said the person uses equal force on Earth. So equal force. So for the jump. So let's just say, regardless, the gravity on Earth is going to be mass times gravity. So Earth. And we're told here that the force is going to be equal as to the force used on the moon. So this has to be the same. So the moon. So the force... The jump is going to be exactly the same on the Earth. Now, let's substitute some values. Let's just assume the gravity on Earth is 1 and the gravity on the Moon is 1 over 6. Because we've been told that the gravity on the surface of the Earth is 6 times stronger than the Moon. So how about we substitute these values? So if we substitute here, mass, so let's just leave mass, we don't know what that is. Gravity of the Earth equals 1. So this side is going to equal 1 mass. If we look up here, 6 times mass, we don't know what that is. We can just assume it's constant. Gravity of the Moon, 1 sixth. So therefore, the force is going to equal 6 times 1 six. So 6 times 1 six is equal to 1. So 1 mass. So there's no net change in force. And you know straight away if there's no net change in force, therefore, the person isn't going to jump. So that's why the answer for 58 has to be A. So now onto the last question, 59. This one as well, we can use mathematics or we can use some deductive reasoning and logical uh, progression of answering the questions. So it says that consider a planet with one third the gravity of Earth. For the jumps using equal force on other planet on 
and on Earth, which of the following is correct? So let's just write jumps in terms of the magnitude. Um, and order them because in the question for 60, it gives us either greater than or less than uh, or equal to for the gravities of the jumps, for the gravity, so for the the number of uh, or the height of the jump or whatever the number is going to be. So we know that the J moon has to be greater than J earth because its gravity is six times less than earth, which means it can jump higher, six times more, but not necessarily actually six times more because of this equation, which I'll get into in a second. But the point is, if we're going to rank which one jumps higher, we know that because the gravity is six times more on Earth and the moon, you jump higher on the moon. And we're told that this extra planet is one third the gravity of Earth, which means it's going to be, obviously, you're going to be able to jump higher on this planet than on the Earth. But not as much as the moon, because the gravity is just a bit greater on the planet than it is on the moon. So we've got this ratio. So what you can do is you can just be logical about it and say, well, um, we know that uh, if you just do, say, simple ratios, this is going to be, um, let's say, a big number compared to this number. So if you do J moon over J earth, you know that this number has to be greater than J moon over J planet. Based simply on the fact that um, if you're going to divide a big number by a small number, that number is going to be a lot bigger than if you divide a big number by, say, a bigger number. So we can, if you wanted to substitute numbers. Now, some students, this is why I didn't want to say the word six times or uh, in terms of the J value. The J value of the moon isn't six times the value of the earth and the reason why i say that is because you've got this here minus one if it was just c just 6k fair enough you'd say all right it's six times more but this minus one throws it off a bit so you can plug and chug some numbers and see what i mean so it's not going to be exactly six times more but let's say it's going to be around six around three and around two based by Simply by the fact that there's a minus one in here, which means the value isn't going to be exactly equal. So because the minus one's there. So you know it's going to be about six divided by about two is going to be greater than about six divided by about three, which is true. But it's not exactly six divided by exactly two. So the answer isn't three is greater than two. It's a number that's around three and around two. The reason why I say that is because if you take a look at the answers available, yes, the answer has to be B, which we just worked out without using any numbers. But the answer can't be C and D because they're using um, exact numbers. J moon over J planet, which we calculated here, is supposed to equal around 2. It's not exactly 2 because... Look at the equations, it's the k value minus 1, which means the fraction is just going to be a bit less. So that's why it can't equal one third, uh, one third of this value because it's not exact. So the number is not going to uh, be that. It's the same as saying j moon over j planet is going to equal 2. It doesn't equal 2. The number is going to be somewhere around 2, but it's not exactly 2. So d is incorrect. And it's the same principle for C. It's going to be incorrect because we're not using exact numbers here because of this minus one. This is what would have confused students. Because if you used 6, 3, 2, you'd think D and C are correct because you'd say, well, J moon is 6, J planet is 3, so 6 over 3 is 2, so therefore D has to be correct. But no, it's approximately 6, approximately 3, so it's not equal to 2. The same thing with C approximately so approximately six over approximately three does not equal one third of whatever that value is so that's why c and d are incorrect a is incorrect because um if you do the ratios as we did it this way you'd see that obviously um this is the correct answer and not a so th this one was a bit of a tricky one because um the minus one through lot they threw i know a lot of students have 
done this before. It's thrown a lot of students off, but just keep in mind that the equations, you just have to look a bit closely, have a keen eye. Now, if you're still um, having problems with this unit or any other physics or maths, I mean, this sort of, uh, these sort of questions, you could have used the mathematics, but you could have used some deductive reasoning. It's up to you what you want to use in the exam, what you think is going to get you the correct answer. But again, just try to have some sort of strategy. So if you have any more questions or queries about this uh, unit, you can post them in the comment section below or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help. Thanks for your time. Bye now.